You are at the WP Water Cooler. Today we are going to be talking about business themes. What's a business theme and, and what can you actually do with a business theme and why are they different from uh, normal themes that are out there? The other thing that I really want to touch on with this is, you know, you got the newbies that are just new to WordPress and they're trying to figure out how can they put their business on the web using WordPress. What criteria should we be looking at for a business theme for their site? Let's get through the introductions here and uh, get everyone introduced. Let's start with you, Chris. Hey, I'm Chris Lama, and I run a meetup here in uh, North County, San Diego, uh, as well as tweeting at Chris Lama and writing a daily post on chrislama.com. Thank you very much, Chris. How about you, Julie? I'm Julie Keel, and I guess I can say that I just started a um, WordPress meetup in Fargo. What, last week, I guess. And uh, uh, also do a few little bit of freelance WordPress uh, work with businesses. So that's why I'm here today. Very nice. Well, thank you. How about you, Patrick? My name is Patrick Rolland. I work for an advertising agency in Green Bay called Burnham Richards. And we do lots of cool WordPress stuff. Awesome. How about you, Richard? Hi, I'm Richard Ward. And for the past 15 years, I've been somewhat of a serial entrepreneur doing web design and development and coding for startups, uh, typically seed funding. Awesome. What about you, Say? Me, my name is Say Reed, and I build WordPress sites and preach about WordPress and do some other stuff too uh, at Say Reed Media. Woo -woo. Very nice. How about you, Steve? I'm Steve Zenkid. I'm the founder of Zeek Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup. Awesome. Thanks for being here. How about you, Suzette? Hi, I'm Suzette. I'm the WordPress evangelist lead over at Media Temple, and I write a lot of articles about WordPress and uh, speak a lot about WordPress at the San Diego and Miami WordCamps. Very nice. And I'm Jason Tucker. I run a company called Tucker Pro. I blog over at WPMedia.pro. So, hot topic. Hot, 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 hot topic. So business, business themes. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. No, no, I was, Bring it. Let's I'm, do this. I'm pretty I'm sure. Sure. I had, I'm, I had I'm something sure in my throat. Last week, he was all like, what a lame topic. I'm just sitting here. I have nothing to say. Why don't we talk about business themes? And so this week, we should kick it off with Steve telling us. I was all criteria. like, and then she goes... And it was like totally like for sure. I'm so from the OC. OMG. It's business so, time, Steve. Make it happen. The, Come on. Let's business do it. themes. I what, what do you got, Steve? I don't understand this question. I don't understand the topic. That's all right. It's about, we we got to shake your money maker, baby. Every what? theme is a business theme because every website has a purpose. It depends on what it depends on what your business is. Yes, that oh, is, the I rant totally is starting. agree. There we go. I that, agree. I said that's it. true. However, there there is one major difference between a business theme and a personal theme. Mm -hmm. A business yeah. theme. Uh, blogs, it's community, it's people, it's conversations, and it's uh, topics. With a business theme, you may not put user comments front and center. You may not be looking for that feedback. That's with a business the theme, with a business theme, you're looking for call to action. You're looking for easy access for contact. It's it's a business. It's a business that's obviously trying to make money instead of say. A you know a, a rage face site or something like that. Rage uh, had, face. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 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 off the top of my head. Um, like a this? lot of a lot of business a lot of business themes for WordPress um, are actually just for the CMS side of things and not actually for the uh, blog aspect of WordPress. But so. Uh, let me let me uh, ask a question then. How is that necessarily related to the theme as opposed to related to the content that you put inside that theme? Really, it's, because, it's because all about it's, your pages and how you configure things, right? That's true, but you have to have the right space. You have to have the right layout to to properly make use of a business theme. It it, it <laughs> changes based on. The, uh, the based on the type of theme and what is uh, what is in there, call to action, contact forms, maybe testimonials. These are content, elements. Content, content, content. 
Yeah, However, but I think I, you, you I think, can go ahead. Oh, oh I think the, the I think what you're what, what you're trying to say there, Richard, is that you have to have areas available to do that. Where if you just have like a single page site and that's it, you know, you're not going to be able to to put those things in there easily. And right. if you're a newbie who's just starting out and trying to get their business site together, um, that makes it really difficult because they don't really know what they're doing. They, and they don't want to have to kind of like build a whole site off of it. So what's a good what's a good way of starting off with with one? And what are the criteria that people should be looking for in a good theme to start off for their business? Setting your static front page. <laughs> there you yeah. go. And we're done. Yeah. Let's could go really home. <laughs> it, it really it really depends on the business and what you're trying to do with the website. Every website on the internet Everything has a depends. purpose. Well, one thing I find that people kind of get hung up on, though, is that they look at the pretties. They look at the color and the, the font and the big slider on the front page, and they don't take time to go back and look at the functionality. Is it going to be able to do what they need it to do eventually? And sometimes things change over time, so you wind up trying to add something that really wasn't built for. But a lot of people don't take time to look and see, can that theme you know, do what it, I need it to do? That's a great point, Julie, and I think a lot of people fall into that pit or it, it, enter into that pitfall because they find a theme and try to sort of back their content into it. Form follows function. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to say to Richard is I hear I heard everything you said. I agree with it. But what if your business is a blog? If your business is a blog, then you have to look at how are you monetizing that business. Uh, probably advertising space, good ad placement. Um, a lot of times, certain advertisers to reach maximum um, optimization, you can't rely on every theme to have the perfect match for your uh, for your advertising or your uh, referrals or however you're making money off of a business blog that is in the business of blogging. I think at that point, also, then it becomes about what plugins you're using because I think really any theme could kind of be structured to fit. A, a, a business website as long as you have mapped out what it is that you're you know the objective of your site and what it is your business site needs to do but then you're talking about really what do you add on to that in order to make it you know a, a fully functional business site do you add a slider do you add a shopping cart do you add you know add an ad manager plugin and the you know that actually comes back then to the kind of age-old WordPress dilemma of should it go in a theme or should functionality go in a theme, or should functionality go in a plugin? Well, we know the answer. The right. answer is all functionality goes in a plugin. And Absolutely. if you're talking about ads, this is a good time to talk about our non-sponsor Ad Sanity plugin, um, which provides fantastic ad capabilities in a plugin for all sorts of placement areas. And that's from the guys uh, over at Pixel Jar who have yet to send us a check, but someday may consider doing so. <laughs> At some point. They just pay us in smiles. They do. They do. In pixels. Um, I, I think that it actually, yeah, the, that, it's that theme dilemma, because really you can make any theme into what you want it to make it into. And I think that becomes the, when all these themes out there are trying to be business themes, it's when they bring that functionality with them into the theme. And that is when you start to have the breakdown, with, especially with the beginning users, of why is this so hard to use, why are there so many options, and there's all these things that they don't need because this business theme is trying to fill all those needs and, and do this and do that and, and all these other things. So, you know, I think stripped down themes, don't play with that, uh, stripped down uh, themes are better, <laughs> are better a than a business theme. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> my favorite my favorite <laughs> dynamic is one that I know Say talks about a lot, and I know that Say and Steve, when you guys are building from the ground up, uh, you know when form follows the function, you don't face this as much. But we do have uh, customers who will go to Theme Forest and look mm -hmm. for the uh, the perfect theme. I'm going to wait till Say is done drinking because I don't want her to spit up all her <laughs> drink. Um, but you'll. You'll have them find the theme they like, right? Decide that that's the business theme for them. Send it to you, and you know, or, or load it up and say, okay, now I need my site to look just like theirs. Only they don't have any content, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when you look at that beautiful theme, you know, on Theme Forest, and it looks like a perfect call to action, shopping cart adding, 
make money while I stay at home and, and you know <laughs> sit on the couch watching TV, and you put it on your site with no content or with you know two or three blog posts, or it doesn't look anything like it. Mm-mm. It looks like an, an empty balloon. <laughs> I spend so much time just just um, with with clients that have picked theme forest themes. Just mm-hmm. they wanted this tweaked or this tweaked or yeah. this tweaked. But it ends up like if I were just to take only the functionality that they needed and built that from the ground up, it would have been less time than doing all those customizations. Agreed. Uh, I'm Absolutely. so frustrated with theme forest at all. You know. And, you know, honestly, I think that's a lot of themes, and I, I I like a lot of those different you know availabilities. But even booth themes, like and definitely like elegant themes, they're so locked down you can't actually even do much with them and people get the theme except for they want that to be like that except for just a few little things like you were saying right and then at that point you're like what are you doing and then you're taking away options and adding options so I've I've had the same thing say with with woo themes where you I I get a theme and it works just almost how exactly how I want it and I just change one or two things and it takes forever because it's all kind of built in Mm -hmm. but the one thing they do really well um, that they've been doing for the past couple months is their Woo features and their uh, testimonials, which are Woo totally testimonial. separate from the theme. Yep. So you can swap in any Woo theme, and their these testimonials and um, features plugins will work on any of them, and it's awesome. It's, it's it's awesome. Same There's, with WooCommerce. Yeah, yeah. WooCommerce yeah. is, yeah, is like pretty much that. the standard in shopping carts at this point, I think. Um, but I was going to say about testimonials, there's an amazing plugin uh, called Testimonials Widget. Um, I don't know if any of you have used Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. It's, yep. it's not mm-hmm. for um, Woo themes particularly, but it is so great. And you can use it for any type of content that you want to rotate. And speaking, you know, even just taking, you know, the default theme, taking 2012 and configuring your two bottom, um, you know, widget areas and sticking some things in there, whether those are rotating images or rotating testimonials, and you can make a uh, we'll really do awesome. Will do custom post types. Will do what? custom post types. Will what do custom post types? The, the testimonials testimonial. widget. Yeah. It creates a custom post type. Oh, it does. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. It puts everything in that. Yeah, it makes its own little guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> what I'm saying though is that um, you can take something even as basic as 2012 and or whatever the default theme is and make that into a business theme that's fully featured and does everything you need it to do without all of that additional layer of difficulty that comes with all of the pre-configured stuff which I think gets in the way of the simplicity of WordPress which gets in the way of using WordPress which defeats the entire purpose well and you hit on something too is talking about simplicity because sometimes the themes that are pretty stripped down are like we were saying is easier to put plugins in to do things than to buy a, a theme that's got a lot of stuff built in but all of a sudden it doesn't do what you want it to do so then you go to add a plug in and you've got a conflict between the two and then you're trying to uh, it just kind of deteriorates from there so you know the idea of having very uh, streamlined theme to start with and then adding to that allows you to swap out plugins down the road too when things change so yeah. I, I argue that the best business theme is underscores absolutely yes yeah. Except for that doesn't work for uh, you know kind of the DIY developers. Although I would say at yeah. this point, I think my recommendation for someone who doesn't want to hire a developer now that w- WordPress.com just introduced their new business level mm-hmm. uh, tier, I guess, where it's two ninety nine for a whole year, and you can use any of WordPress's themes. If you're not trying to do something custom, I think that's really your best option. Twenty four dollars a month, you get support. You're going with the standard WordPress, so it's not going to have all of the complicated stuff that gets in there and gets all bloated and confusing. And that, you know, is kind of like, that's where I would say at this point a great beginner should start with. Rather than trying to set up their own, you know, 2012 or even configure that or configure a theme for us theme that has a, a slider that has to have the right measurements for the, you know, right. theme and they're having right, to edit right, right. graphics. Well, and, what's nice about know, that is you can get out of that easy as well. So say like they get to a point where they're like, you know, I want to sell stuff online, I want to get more custom, I want to be able to do whatever. Yanking that stuff out of WordPress.com and then putting it into a, you know, .org, you know, self-hosted is easy. As opposed to a more complicated theme that has its own custom post types or its own little guys. And uh, it, uh, you know, those, those get kind of stuck in the theme, which is like, at that point, you're like, what's, this is, 
you know, no better than Website Tonight because you can't get the data out. I mean, it's better. But than does does tonight. the WordPress.com <laughs> offer? Does that let you sell online? No, it's restricted no. to the. You don't have it. You can't add any plugins because it's still WordPress.com. Right. So I mean, you could probably do like some manual PayPal or something. I would think. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you did like some yeah. ma ma manual buttons. Yeah, just, I, when we talk tried. about when we talk about business and a recommendation for business, if they're trying to generate revenue, the WordPress.com solution may not work if they're thinking they can earn money on the site. But that's mm. only for people who are doing e-commerce. Right? Yeah, if you're a store like a, a shop or something where you're not um, selling things online, or if you're like yeah. a consultant or you're a psychologist. You know, you're right. not necessarily trying to sell online. So obviously, if your main thing is selling online, you're going to need something more robust. But and you might point, not need a shopping cart. So yeah, right. you it and so that goes back to our lovely. It depends. What do you got, Steve? I was just going to ask. Maybe what we should do is go around and suggest th some themes for particular businesses. Because I think when you think of business theme, everybody hears it differently. Mm hmm I agree. I, I, for example, uh, on WordPress.com, um, they just introduced a new feature with Loku, which is a menu producing, like, for restaurants. Mm -hmm. You can make your menu on this place called Loku, and then it uh, shops out to uh, Open Table and a bunch of different other um, restaurant, you know, centric websites. And uh, WordPress.com just announced that they're integrating, so you can actually have that plugin. And there's a plugin for the WordPress.org. There's a Loku plugin also. But you can um, now use it with WordPress.com. So if you're a restaurant, you're obviously not really selling online. But now you can have your restaurant um, menu online and have that be dynamic and manage yeah. it somewhere else. So that that's an example of a business that's not selling online that could do that type of a .com setup. Well, I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at WooThemes.com right now, and they have uh, you know a couple different categories you could pick from app, business, whatever. If I click on business and go look over at, at the business stuff. I mean, they even have one pager as a you know as a, a, a business theme. They have um, apply. And I think one, I mean, one pager is a great theme. That's a newer that's a newer theme from WooCommerce. It's a great theme. Yeah, you know, Pixel Press. I mean, there's all these different ones that are on here, and it really just it, it it comes down to like what how do you want the site to be displayed? You know, do you want the stuff up here? Do you want it to be responsive? Do you want it to be uh, something on the uh, column on the left, column on the right? You know, just being able so, to pick from those sorts of things. So and that comes we, we use oh sorry we we use pixel press for zeke.com and it, it got us about 90% of the way there and then we customize a couple little things you know to get us the rest of the way there one of the things that I found challenging working with businesses too is that they don't quite understand the idea of themes. So when you find something and you want to kind of say, you know, what do you think of this particular one? They don't understand really that it can all be manipulated and changed. So they see what's presented on the screen and then all of a sudden they're like, I don't like that. And it's like, no, you don't think you will quite understand that we can add those things that you're looking for. It just you know, I need your approval to go ahead with this particular theme. <laughs> Just but I don't think you're yes. catching the vision Just of what yes. it actually can do. do. Also, yeah. conversely, that same argument is that they see it and they want to, they're like, oh, just change this. But whatever right. that yeah. just change this is happens to be Which the most embedded. Completely so understand of everything. that it's, it's, yeah. all, it's all integrated with one another, but at the same time, it's right. dynamic enough to be easily changed without reinventing the wheel. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's like both ends of the extreme, and we're trying to bring them into the middle. Yep. Not to not to sound too much like a woo like a woo cheerleader, but they have another theme. You mentioned you mentioned restaurants. They have a theme called diner that is yeah. specifically for I've, restaurants. I've used that before. Actually, it's pretty nice. They have one for real estate agents as well. Yep. Um, as does Studio Press. Studio Press is a whole uh, set of themes called um, what are they called? Agent Press. Agent, Agent Press. Yeah. Yeah. See, and, yeah. But then you're getting into the idea of, you know, how much, if everyone that's a restaurant is using diner, you know, if that's the main theme for it, it's like, you know, the, I guess it becomes then about your content, which is really what it's all about anyway. Your but, content, how you're your using graphics, it. you can yeah. design, adjust the photographs. But you're still going to have to do all those customizations is what I'm saying. Of so it's like, if you, if you uh, everyone expecting yeah. it to just work right out of the box, you know, they're going to be disappointed no matter what, or it's going to look super template-y, you know. So it's like, I really try to stress to all my business clients that no matter what, they're going to have to do some work. You cannot just 
op- you know, upload something, turn it on, and then have a perfectly made website. And this that's, is why we tell people. This it's is why crazy. we tell people. This is why we tell people not to get a theme that had that's full featured with absolutely everything in it, with all these custom post types and all that stuff, because they're going to have to hire somebody to either recreate those custom post types in a, in a plugin. That then can you know they can then change their theme to something else and still be able to have that functionality available to them. Totally. Really, the most important thing is to figure out first, outline what it is your website needs to do, what your plan is yeah. for the website. Figure out what fig you know write up your content first, and then you know I think we were saying this earlier. You know, form follows function, like Steve is saying um, <laughs> that if you're going to, you have to do that first. Otherwise, you're just gonna you know be trying to fit yourself into that you know, square peg, round hole, and it's just going to be uncomfortable. Well, the, the takeaway here is don't start with a theme. Start with planning. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good thing to say. Which is so boring to everyone. Everyone, It's like the same thing with web design or web development. They're like, I want to pick the colors. It just depends if you want to do it right. Right. <laughs> I kind of I explain it to my uh, small business development center clients as you have to build the house before you can interior do the interior decorating. Like you can't, you can't decide. Well, I guess you could decide on some colors and generally, but those things are going to change based on what the house is like and where the light hits and all that stuff. So first, and you that's have to how build I the blueprint. A theme. I, I mean, the house building thing is really a good metaphor because you talk about building a house. That's what I think you know the the developers do to some extent. But first, you got to know is how many people are going to live in it. You know, yes. are, are you going to have an office in it? You know, do you want a pool in the backyard? You know, do you need indoor plumbing? Right, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to maintain one... that house by yourself, or do you? Want <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Is it, it going to be a duplex? Is it is it going to be a, a mansion yeah. on a so hill? Let's keep the metaphor going. So the first question you ask clients is, how many people are going to live inside your website? And like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's truth to that, because you've got to know how many people are going to maintain it, too. Well, then they also answer with the kind of pie-in-the-sky thing, which is like, I want this giant mansion, and really, they only need a little craftsman bungalow, but you know, in their mind, they're like, you know, this giant thing that they need. So I think it's about... Um, forming and, and reforming expectations and setting real expectations for, again, what you need and not what, you know, you Absolutely. might want and, and your vision of where you're going to be in five years, you know, and explaining that websites change and evolve and develop and that's the greatest thing about WordPress is you can upgrade really easily and switch around and you don't have to be stuck to that forever. It's not like, it's not like a marriage. But as long as you make good decisions up front. <laughs> and that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're trying to help people out here in this is that we want to get, make sure that they're making uh, making good decisions, you know, at the, at the very beginning here, because they could pigeon their hold themselves and have some pl- some theme that has a bunch of functionality in it, and then they're going to have to come up with some creative way to get out of that functionality or to transport that functionality to another theme. Right. Yeah. And I, one thing that hasn't been mentioned that I think is worth mentioning, though, is that it's really going to depend on the budget that they have. So yeah. If, totally. if you're a photographer and you spend twenty thousand on your camera equipment and then you will allocate 300 to, for your website. It's just not going to work out. That never <laughs> well, that goes back yeah. to the host thing too. I, Suzette, I want to mention too until I have about to pay for it. $300 dollar website and yes, the delivery and it is <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the one I found out about the twenty thousand dollars of uh, camera equipment. I didn't have any. Um, and you're like, the scale here is a little off. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're not mentioning names. That no. comes back to expectations and what you know, what you can get with the website and the whole like pre yeah. pre bought pre made website type deal. But you know what? Hey, let's talk about the three hundred dollar website for a moment. If you know that, if you know that the majority of your business is not going to be done online, you and you just need a website. Maybe that's why the three hundred dollar budget exists. Yeah, maybe, yeah, and maybe that can buying be reasonable. And just throwing in some content is perfect for you because you're going to get five visitors a month. Absolutely, and you already know it. Absolutely right. And if and if that's your place, that's great. Um, obviously, the 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 joke of the post was they had spent days custom creating a Photoshop rendition of their website to be, and so they had burned three hundred hours or three hundred dollars in a few hours easily. <laughs> Um, mm. Designing, and then they turn around and they're like, "But you, you guys just now I've done all the hard work. Where's the button to make it a website?" I, right. I wasn't specifically talking about your post, Chris. I'm just saying. Although, 
for There's some that people. CSS tricks plugin. Well, and that's like true too because Photoshop sometimes plugin. people want all those bells and whistles, and they really don't need them. I mean, if you're the majority of your business, if the if the call to action is call me, you know, all you really need to say is this is what I do. This is here's who I help. Push number. the button. Uh -huh. Yeah, here's the yeah. phone number. Yeah. And, the, and the thing the thing with that is. People want what they see. People surf the web and they see websites look a certain way and they want that, regardless of whether or not it fits their business model or their needs. And that's what you have to explain to people is, okay, XYZ.com has all these plugins, has a drop-down pop-out, has transparent video graphics, but that might not be your business. But if you want to spend the money on it, you have to realize that if it's not pertaining specifically to the needs of your WordPress blog and what you're trying to do, you're throwing money away, whether it's $300, whether it's $20,000. Richard, yeah. that's, that's an excellent point. I can't tell you how many clients called me you know, pre-WordPress and said, I need Flash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Just because they just want flash. I just yeah. to tell their, I don't their know friends. What it is. I have flash. It does, but that's what I want. <laughs> and, and and now here it is, 2013. Someone says I need flash, and I tell you, I think you might need a doctor. Flash. <laughs> flash. <laughs> flash doesn't work. Have Have you guys seen the show Property Brothers or Real Estate yeah. Brothers or something yeah. like that? So it's it's one of my favorites. It's it's a a a property a real estate guy with his brother who's a a construction guy. And they meet with a couple who tells them what they want in a house, and it's a beautiful house. And they, you know, obviously what they want, they want all the bedrooms and all the land and a pool in the right neighborhood, close to a walking distance from school. And then they tell you what their budget is, right? Which is you know two hundred thousand right. dollars. And and they want to live in the nicest area of Boston, let's say. And so the 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 real estate brother literally takes them to their dream house, takes them to the house, shows them the whole house. And then at the end, ask them, you know, how much do you think the house is, is, is worth? You know, like, you know, what do you think the price is to buy this house? And it's always like 4x, 5x what their budget was. And, and that's, you know, surprisingly, that's when they should get punched, but they don't quite often <laughs> enough. Um, but obviously, the, you know, the husband's always like, well, why did you show us this? And that's when he introduces his brother, and his brother says, a lot of the things you like in this house – I can recreate in, a, in another house that is a lot more affordable to you, right? Absolutely. And, it's, and it focuses them to say, what exactly do I like about this house? Not just generically, I want everything. Right. But one, of the, one of the things I've taken away from that show is when, when people walk up and they want to talk about a website and what they want, I'll walk them through three or four sites and just explain to them what the budget was of those sites. And that immediately anchors them to, that's way above my budget, even though I don't know what their budget is yet. And by doing approach. that, then we can start having the conversation. Now, tell me what you like out of these, and we can bring them back into a site that's for you. And invariably, they'll say, well, really, only what I really need or what I want is this piece and this piece. Yeah, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, because they're not ready to spend 10000 or $15,000 oh, yeah. on a website, right? And you're yeah, like, yeah. right, but that had a custom designer. That had a custom logo designer plus a custom website designer plus a programmer or two that was involved plus they spent – weeks on that. Plus the content have, developer, someone to write the content. And they have a copywriter. Yeah. I mean, that's and a, a photographer. Team. And, and you're yeah. showing up and saying, I have $2,000. And you're like, okay, let's walk through what we need to take from these things to do help you, you figure out what's in your budget. Do you then fly them to Boston? I don't. Never. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lately I've just been uh, building with 2012 and uh, for my small business development center clients and really trying to focus them on the content. But I like your approach there of the sell up to sell down uh, that you're talking about. Don't steal my quote. I stole your quote. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was straight from the chat. <laughs> Cited by uh, Steve Zingett. There you and go. To, uh, and, and to touch on what Chris just said, that's the great thing about WordPress is it's fairly cost effective. And these little elements that people see on other websites, they're mostly plugins. A lot of times there are freely available plugins that cost, you know, little to nothing. We to won't do a want to let them know that we have already pre made solutions that we're gonna use on their website that are free. Why not? I think it's important to it, be open it, about it, they don't, well, you have to know about the plugin, so I, I just think that's valuable. So Did you guys 
you guys heard, I think Jason, you posted about this. There was that um, the uh, some African country uh, paid $140 million yeah, yeah. for yeah, a website. Just that. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll, put that in the, I'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, $140 million over three years for this website, and it was uh, basically a, like a $400 theme or not even that. It was so basic of a theme. It was basically a theme for his theme. Um, that they marked up that much, and it was a big deal. I think they actually brought it into their parliament and brought it up and said, put up two different websites and says, can you tell the difference between this website and this website? And everyone was like, no. And they're like, so why did we pay $140 million? Yep. But, but, but say, so it was over three years. Right. You know, three years. <laughs> that so, makes it uh, better. It breaks it down. It's good because content development now it's is on a hard reverse mortgage. Those... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think we it, got in trouble. It's now 2.30 p.m. We've been talking for, I don't know, how many hours now about this? Oh, wait, wait. That's Richard's <laughs> thing. It, it's 11.31. I, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for uh, being on the show with me. I looked at Richard's like, oh, my goodness, dude. This We're really late. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much for uh, coming on the show here, talking about um, business themes. Yay! And um, it's business. It's I want to let you know that uh, we are we're we're doing some pretty big things on YouTube right now, and I want you to take a look at YouTube.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, go and click on the subscribe button. Leave a comment on there. We love comments on there. If you don't like YouTube comments, you don't want to be called, you know, some crazy name or whatever, um, go over to our <laughs> website, and you can uh, you can definitely leave comments there in a nice, safe environment. And uh, we'll talk to we you next week. We might call you names, but yeah, that's absolutely. The best. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Uh, bye.